my birthday party, and now it is November 6th, and this is the third tape in a series of tapes of my father giving some reflections on his life, and the part of the story that we're up to right now is, um, so you just moved to Philadelphia, and you're the educational director of, uh, of, uh, of the school of, at um, OCJCC. OCJCC, a school of 800 kids, and okay, how are you? I can see why they were leery about hiring me. I was almost 31 years old, mm. with very limited experience, and certainly no experience to run a school of 800 kids. The guy before me had been a part-timer, but a professional educator. Um, a very nice guy, I uh, met him subsequently. Anyhow, they looked at me a little bit askance, the teachers, when they met me, this little pipsqueak is going to run in the other two you know. Um, but they found out after a while that I uh, knew what I was doing, and I wasn't taking any crap from anybody. Um, so I settled in. And Who was your boss? The rabbi? Basically, the rabbi is the boss. But it, uh, it's understood I run the school. The rabbi doesn't run the school. Okay. Uh, if there's a problem, he supersedes me. As a matter of fact, before I accepted the job, I had a call from one of the Balabatim in the interview committee who wanted to know would I be strong enough to buck the rabbi if I had to. Hmm. And uh, that bothered me. Uh, why should I have to buck the rabbi? Well, um, but that passed. Um, I, I spent a lot of time writing up a curriculum, meeting with teachers, planning for a school year, and learning about things I didn't know anything about, like uh, what, what's, what's a curriculum for, for confirmation classes one, two, and three. Mm. You know, um, I had some good uh, people to work with, though. Uh, uh, Rose uh, Fried was Freed. then the director of the pre uh, preschool. She stayed on all the time I was there. And she knew her job. She knew preschool very well. Um, we had no high school. Um, such kids as planned to go on to high school went to, to grads. So it was about the size of it. Later on, the BGE formed a series of regional high schools uh, of a number of congregations joining together. And one was the Greenstone High School which was housed at the JCC, and most of the kids then went there. But when I first came there, there was no high school. Um, but nevertheless, uh, uh, I had to keep in mind uh, what you do with uh, uh, 800 kids, uh, probably around 500 or so in, in the Hebrew school, uh, three or four classes of, of uh, 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 each grade level and inadequate quarters uh, to house that many kids. Even though confirmation kids met in the evening and uh, preschool kids met in four corners of the, of the auditorium, because there was no classroom space for them, uh, there was always the, the question of where do you put them all? But uh, we worked it through. And um, uh, I have a little organization skill, not, not like you, but some. So I was able to, to plan out so that uh, we never found ourselves in a situation where we were confronted with, with an unexpected uh, problem. Uh, it, it worked out pretty good. Um, we, we had the usual uh, problems, uh, arranging transportation, or, or a, a kid, uh, a teacher looked cock at a kid, and then we had from the parents, and, well, you know, those are the normal things that, that you expect. But they were pretty good years. Um, and uh, um, I or asked for salary at that point. I think I came to Erie at 6000 When I left, it was at 8000 And uh, that's what I asked for at the, at the, at the at JC, OCJC. OCJC. I didn't want to be chas or something. 
uh, of course, in those days, uh, afternoon school principals were making ten to fifteen thousand. First of all, I didn't know that, and second, so they got all, a bargain. Yeah, oh yeah. As a matter of fact, in the third or fourth year, I was there. Um, we wanted to buy. We needed to buy a, a, a new TV, and the husband of my educational committee chairman owned a store that sold TVs. And I went there to buy the store, and they asked me for information. And I told my son, he said, "You mean you don't make ten thousand dollars yet?" <laughs> and that's how you found out. Yeah. Um, but uh, on the whole, there were, there were good years. Uh, that's where, uh, you know how Danny was born? Uh, what did you tell me? Who's Grossman's Folly. How so? Um, Danny was born in 1950... I was born in 67. He was born four years earlier. Yeah, 1963. 63, yeah. 63. The anniversary of, of uh, Jeffrey's birth. Uh, Grossman's Folly? I was making at that point probably around 8,500 or 9,000, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I asked, and then my uh, contract was up for renewal. And I asked them to increase my salary over a three year period uh, 500 the first year, 1,000 the second year, 1,500 the third year. Aaron Grossman, who was a curmudgeon and a uh, and, uh, uh, miserable kind of guy, was the president of the shul. And he said, that's ridiculous. We'll give you the 1500 this year. Oh. That okay. was an unexpected windfall. And we came home made whoopee. <laughs> so Danny is Grossman's father. Mm-hmm. I, ne I never asked you about this when you were telling, when you were talking about uh, when Edwin and Jeff were born in uh, Erie. But um, how, long before, how long were you married before you had Ed? Edwin and Jeff were born in, 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 uh, in uh, Rochester. In Rochester. How long had you been married before you had Ed? Well, Edwin was born in 1953. We were married in 1952. Okay, so you waste no time building your family. Your mother wanted a baby. Um, and then, then uh, and, you know, in those days, she, the, the, she spent all nine days at the hospital. Didn't come home. What the bris was oh. in the hospital. Oh, really? She right. came home the day after the bris. Well, they don't do that anymore. No, sir. And same thing with the... With the with Jeff, um, the hospital was at, at I'd say probably about uh, 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 Danny was one on the Shabbos, mm -hmm. and the hospital was probably about uh, uh, twenty minutes walk from where your grandparents lived, and from there to my apartment was probably another half an hour's walk or something, or maybe more. So I, I went, uh, uh, I drove your mother to, to, to the hospital, but then I walked uh, Wait, who are you talking about? Which child? Edwin. Okay, so you walked from the hospital to Mom, then I Grandma, walked Grandma's from house. the hospital to Grandma and Grandpa's house. Yeah. And then from there, all the way back to my apartment mm -hmm. was a hell of a walk. Yeah, that's a slap. And uh, everybody met and said, it's a boy, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, all right, so now we're in, we're in Cleveland, well, sorry, we're in, we're in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. You're doing this huge job. Um, how, long, how long have you been working before you got that raise? Well, it was 1963. And then fifty nine. Okay, gotcha. But I made have, uh, had a five hundred dollar raise over before that, but uh, that I expected five fifteen five thousand fifteen. You got to fifteen right away. Unexpected, totally unexpected. Um, they had a very active principals council in Philadelphia, and by virtue of my job, I was a member of the principals council, and I became fairly active in that. Uh, eventually became chairman of it. Um, and that's how I got to know um, 
Dr. Bill Lackwitz, who is the director of the Board of Jewish Education, a little more intimately than I had known before. I spoke to him before and responded to him before I took a job in, at OCJCC. And of course, in, in terms of finding teachers uh, to replace uh, at the beginning of a new school year, I, I would talk to him, but I didn't know him that well. I got to know him better when I was with the principal's council. Um, and uh, eventually, um, I've been at the school eight years. Uh, this was 1966, um, seven years ago it was. If you asked me if I would be interested in becoming the um, assistant principal, of the assistant director of the board. And uh, you're now like 38 years old. Yeah, so it's a nine something like that. And I said, well, I still have a year to go on my contract with OCJCC. Well, maybe that can be worked out. I said, if they will let me, you know, I'd be de delighted. Particularly, would be a raise in it. I'd get twelve thousand dollars a year, uh, which was huge. Uh, and. Uh, um, so I stuck it in my head. One day as I'm walking the hall at OCJC, one of the knackers from the uh, board of directors, an uh, officer or something, um, and by, by the way, enrollment had started to slip because the neighborhood was changing. Already? Yeah, it was getting older. When they started the school in, in, in 1956 or 57, all a bunch of young bucks. But you know what happens to young bucks? They yeah. become old bucks. Right. The kids were growing up. Mm -hmm. The school, uh, so um, by that time, maybe the school slipped down to five or six hundred, something like that. And he said to me, uh, I know that you're very loyal to, to us and, and you wouldn't think of leaving us, but if anything comes up that sounds like you might be interested, don't hesitate. We wouldn't stand your way. Hmm. That's very gracious. Okay. When I got this off from Bill Lackwitz, I remember those words. And I said to him, maybe we can work something out. So I approached my president at the time, and I told him I had this offer from uh, the Board of Ed, uh, and I had been approached by someone in the show. Uh, would, it, would it be possible for me to uh, to uh, uh, end your contract a year earlier. To end the contract a year earlier. He said, well, I don't see what there would be a problem, but let me talk to the, to the boys. So a week, two weeks, three weeks passed. I haven't heard from him. Um, so I approach him, uh, and uh, again, I tell him, uh, what did the boys decide? Well, we haven't really decided anything yet, but uh, uh, I don't see there would be any problem. Well, so I called Bill Ackers and said, from what I hear, there won't be any problem. Anyhow, the whole thing dragged. And it turned it topsy-turvy. I wanted to leave them, mm. and I'm putting him in this position, mm. and how did I, you know, uh, uh, to the point where, where uh, 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 I was so angry. Ramirovsky came, the rabbi came to my house, and I said to him, you know, uh, I'm going to have to talk to the board, and I want you to support me. No problem. So he called the board meeting. He never showed up. He was all the time in his office, right next to where we were meeting. Hiding? Yeah. And, and, uh, then he came to my house after the board. The board meeting was a disaster. For one thing, I completely lost my temper, and uh, I probably rambled and, and, and mm. was very incoherent. Um, and uh, and, and uh, uh, it got to the point where they they they, they felt that I had uh, I let them out. Them and let them everyone. And that the board vote was no, they would not let me out of a contract. 
uh, then the rabbi was very uh, uh, upset and came to the house to talk to me. I just walked through him out. I said, what business? You told me you'd be there to help me, to support me. Where the hell were you? He said, you call yourself a rabbi? Mm. Is this the way a rabbi acts? What did he say? Didn't say much. Nothing could say. Didn't say much. Um, anyhow, um, we would let me out of contact, called Bill. And we said, I can't do it, they won't let me out of contact. He said, well, um, how much more do you need to go there? I said, another year. He said, we'll hold the job open for you for a year. Wow. So, um, um, I went back to work. The mother to this day doesn't understand how I did this because one of the, a uh, uh, couple of the kids that taught for Bermitzvah during this period were the children of these people that maligned me. Mm. How could I, I said, what did kids have to do with it? Yeah, it was foreshadowing things to come later in life. Well, I don't know. Um, so I, I, um, I finished out my, my eight years with them, and uh, it was nine years, I don't remember anymore. And, uh, You're the, the only show in town? Who? That uh, OCJCC? Oh, no, 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 no. It, within walking distance from where you lived? No. Are there other shows within walking distance? It was Temple Shalom, which was a big shul. There was Beth Emmeth, which was a big school. Other sh conservative shuls? Conservative, yeah. Did and you all gone, too. Oh, for sure. All the while, while you're working at OCJCC, are you only davening at OCJCC? Yeah. And well, not only that, it was uh, uh, I was also required to be in charge of youth. So I had to be there for the USY services, and organize the, uh, the younger children's services, and all that sort of stuff. And after... I after, ran USY and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, after this exploded, and after you left, did you continue davening at OCJCC, even after you left that job? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had... Uh, Robert Rafferty is still the rabbi. Oh, yeah. I had uh, put the... Uh, uh, bought a seat in honor of my parents. Uh, uh, a seat in the show. In the show, yeah. Um, no, I, you know, what I had to do, I had to do. But uh, um, they, they really... Uh, uh, I could have been out there a year earlier. No, no great deal. So now you're at the Board of Education. I went with the Board of Ed, and... Uh, uh, that was Board of Ed, and was also you, was United Synagogue? The Board of Ed in, in Philadelphia is a misnomer. It's a Philadelphia branch of, of the Board of Education of the United Synagogue. Uh, my nominal the, uh, uh, boss was Bill Lackwitz, but over him was Martin Siegel, who was... Who was uh, in charge of uh, the education department by the time I got there. Um, I would come in every once in a while for national regional directors meeting and all that. What was, and what was the, what was the purpose of the Board of, Jewish Edu Board of Ed? To coordinate the, uh, the conserve congregational schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you worked as the education... And eventually he created the regional high school system. Or, um, when you worked uh, as the education director at uh, OCJCC, W were you in, c in close contact with the Board of Ed then also, in mm -hmm. that capacity? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how you met Bill initially? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, was that was OCJC the largest school of all the school conservatives? I don't think so. I, I, I'm not sure. It was really the glory days of the conservative uh, movement. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. Beth Emmeth was a huge school. Uh, the education director of Beth Emmeth was a fellow the name of Nachum Moskopf. Good Jewish name, Mousekopf. Mousekopf. Mousehead. Nice. Nice. Uh, okay, and your job... Not sure. And your job is at the Board of Ed was as the... Uh, assistant Director. Assistant Director, the number two. Mm -hmm. um, I basically had to invent a job. I, I found this, you know, I've, I've told this to Edwin, I've told other people. Uh, you you get a prospectus, you... you, you, you you're told of the opening someplace, you know, the job. Uh, and then they may even tell you what they expect of you. Forget that. You create a job. Right. Yeah. 
when you took the job at, at, at the NCSY, it was it what you're doing now? I wrote my own job description. Exactly. You do, and I think I only do half of those things and do lots of other things. You invent a job. Yeah. And the same, the same thing is true in the school, too. Yes, yeah. uh, no. um, at the board first, there was no place for me to sit. There, uh, there was a big room with a clutter of old desks and chairs, and uh, Bill put me at the far end, and then I really know what, what he wanted from me. Um, but then it, it clarified a little over a while, and then a room became available, small, old, dilapidated room, but it was a room. I could close the door, mm -hmm. open the window, mm -hmm. whatever. And basically, I, I, I uh, became very active, and, and I think uh, I was a good assistant to him. Uh, I did a great job in teacher placement, which was an area that was sorely neglected and sorely needed. Uh, people would come in for an interview for a position, and I would see, uh, and I would be in touch with all the principals and find out who needs what and when. Mm -hmm. And um, some people I'd refer, and some people I'd say sorry, but uh, I don't see anything that would uh, meet your needs. I remember one guy came in, he was interested in the job in, in teaching in an afternoon school. I said, fine. Um, what uh, uh, what are your qualifications? I'm uh, uh, I'm going in for the rabbinate. Good. Can you uh, um, lead the services? Hmm. I don't go to service. <laughs> I believe in services. Hmm. So did you read Hebrew? Hmm. Not so much. I said, can you tell me? What the Tanakh is, what the Chumash is? No. I said, how do you dare have the chutzpah to want to teach in a Jewish school? You're the ignoramus. <laughs> what does he say? I guess he didn't get the job. I wouldn't refer him any place. But uh, I did a lot of referrals, and I think probably in the years I was there, I must have referred more than 100 uh, people wow. to, to jobs in, in the schools over the course of three years. <clears throat> was there uh, I was uh, in charge of the annual um, teachers conference uh, I was uh, in charge of coordination with the principals council so it was, it was a good three years uh, it, it's, you, you ask your mother they were the best three years of my professional life why? I'd get up in the morning I'd take the bus to the train I'd take the train downtown I'd get off, I'd be there at 9 o'clock to start working. I finished at 5 o'clock and I'm home, I'm finished. Mm. I didn't have any weekends, I didn't have any Sundays, yeah, I didn't have any evenings, I had no meetings. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And Bill was a wonderful guy to work with. Uh, he had a tragic uh, end, you know. Mm. You know? Bill, uh, this, this happened years after I left, I was already in, in uh, Cincinnati. Bill has a son, who had a son who uh, lived in Cleveland. And I think Thanksgiving, he and his wife, who was a lovely lady. Bill and his wife or his son and his wife? Bill and his wife uh -huh, uh -huh. came to Cleveland to visit his son. Right. And I'm sure they had a wonderful weekend together. And then he drove home, and a few blocks from his home there was a terrible accident. He was killed. His wife was severely wounded. I don't know if she's regained her sanity even to this day. Wow. They were lovely people. Was, a was, was, he, was he part of a multi, it was a multi car accident or is just his accident? I think he and uh, Kalani were not the car. Oh, that's terrible. Um, did you ever, uh, when you were in that position, for the, that happened after you already left, when you were in the position of the BJE, or whatever, Board of Jewish Education in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. What became of your old position at uh, at uh, OCJCC? Who took over for you? <laughs> First of all, they hired a shmigegi, uh, a young rabbi who was a dapper dresser and snappy, answers, come up from the south sometimes, I think, 
I, I don't remember his name anymore. And he was hired as assistant rabbi educational director. So when you wanted him to do something with Shul, say, I'm the educational director. I don't have time for this. You want to do something in, in the school, say, I'm the assistant rabbi. <laughs> Hmm. Clever. You know who ran the school during that time? Hmm. Your brother Jeff. How so? Because you knew where everything was. <laughs> the teachers would need something to call them, you know, uh, or find things. Um, the guy was was a complete, not only a shmagegi, but uh, uh, a liar and uh, um, absolutely uh, the worst you can imagine. He lay down, performed into marriages, and then the... Wow. Yeah, all, all the way back then? Yeah. Um, how long did he last? Last a year. Well, that's all. It's not very long. And then there was a procession of part uh For a while, I, I think, um, um, Rose Fried ran for a while, and there was some other part timers ran it. And who did you succeed in Philly? Uh, also a part-time man, his name is Silverman, very nice fellow, but uh, he didn't have a chance. How could he run a school of 800 people on a part-time basis? Forget it, Paul. And, uh, and uh, who followed you in, in, um, in um, Erie? I have no idea. I don't know. The guy whom I succeeded, I've never met, but there were rumors swirling about his name. And uh, uh, supposedly, uh, he uh, he was caught in some indecent act with one of the kids. There you go. A pervert or something. I don't believe it to this day. What I believe may have happened, and this kid happened to be a grandson of his Max Silva, uh -huh. of a knack. What I believe may have happened is that Max Silva, may, that the, 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 the principal, may have come in the bathroom and seen him masturbating and said something to him. Mm -hmm. and that was the end. But these were the rumors that he was a pervert. Gotcha. Um, Philadelphia. You're in the position of CJCC how many years? Eight years? From 1959 to 1968. Uh, oh, so I was born uh, you were sold OCJCC. Okay. Um, the picture that you have of that big dinner that was made for you, the send-off mm -hmm. dinner, was that from OCJCC or was that from the board? OC. That was OCJCC. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, if uh, you remember, remember the sequence of the Parshas in the Torah, mm -hmm. Achimos, mm -hmm. Kedoshim, mm -hmm. Amor. Mm -hmm. Translate that. Achimos, after the death. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of Kedoshim? Holiness. And more is said. After the guy is dead, you see how holy he was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, correct. So they at least give you a grand Oh, yeah. Even the, though, even oh, the, the president and, 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 and my school director and the rabbi and and, and Bill Lackers was there. and all. That was nice. That was nice. But Rose Samlin organized that for you, no? I don't know who organized it. I, she may have had a, a hand in it, but uh, I don't know who organized it. All right, so BJ, uh, good experience? Did very you? good. Very good. But only three years. Not very long. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, and um, as I say, these were the happiest years. And I felt I was productive. And I felt I was appre appreciated. I, I would sit at my desk and, and I have completed a piece of work or something. And Bill Lackage would come up to me and say, Max, that was a fine piece of work. I loved them. Positive reinforcement, how unusual. I've heard, you know, people have come to me with complaints. i never had anybody give me compliments. Hmm. It was very nice. Uh, I've been there uh, from 1968 uh, to uh, 1970. Uh, 70, 70, yeah. Um, or well, from 1969 to 71. And I'm sitting at home on uh, one uh, motor Shabbos, and the phone rings. By the way, while I was there, in order to, 
to make a Alexa Panasse, I was teaching at Gratz College, uh, particularly in the summers. I had to give courses at Gratz College. What did you teach on? Um, I, I taught some uh, Tanakh. I taught some uh, Perik. Uh, there, there were nice people there. I, I had a wonderful time there. Um, the guy who was then the president, he's now NIFT already. Uh, president of what? Of Gratz College. Mm -hmm. Was uh, um, my age, things and names disappear. Um, the name will come back again. Anyhow, he was a good buddy of Joe Nobles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I. I uh, had met him before Kennedy Grants. But when I was in Grants, uh, of course, I saw more of him. Um, and uh, one month of Shabbos, I'm sitting at home, and the phone rings. And it's him on the phone. And he says to me, Max, Max how old are you? So I'm taking him back from a little bit. Mm. So I said, uh, whatever it was. Um, he said, uh, you know, it's time you went out on your own instead of being a second fiddle. So what are you talking about? He said, well, you know, in Cherry Hill, right across the bridge from you, um, Jake Levine is retiring as a director of the Bureau there. I want you to apply for that job. I said, what do I know about being a bureau director? Right? Who's calling you on the phone again? Who is it? It's Joe Noble? Uh, no, no, it was his buddy. Uh, uh -huh. uh, what's his name? Uh, I think oh, that's okay. But I think he worked in Philly? He was the director of Grass of Grass College. Oh, he was director the of Grass president. Okay, president of Grass College. College. Okay, so he's encouraging you to apply for this job in Cherry Hill. Yeah, he wants to really apply for that. So what I know about being a director. I wonder if Cherry Hill even still has a BJE. Yeah. Um, today, I don't know. He said, now look, what do you got to lose? And it's right across the Taconi Pamara Bridge from you. And I said, all right. I'll give him a call. Give him the name of the guy to call. Um, so I called the guy up. And we arranged to meet at, at the restaurant or something uh, a couple of days later. I drive in, we sit and talk, and he says to me, well, you know, we have another candidate under, con under consideration. If we decide on him, then that's it. If we decide not to go with him, then we'll give you a call and, and we'll see if we can offer you the job. I said, that's fine, no problem. A few days later, I get a call that they had offered the job to the guy that interviewed, so the, the job was no longer available. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd called Likertz to begin with. I don't want to go behind his back. And I told him, this is what happened, and uh, I'm going to talk to the guy. So I called Bill Likertz and said, Bill, I don't have to worry, I'm back. The job fell through, and, uh, uh, yeah. Um, was he supportive? No. Yeah. A few days go by and I get a call from uh, the guy who was then the, who was a member of the Educators Assembly and who was then the chairman of the placement committee of the Educators Assembly. Mm -hmm. And he lived in Orange, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And he called me and said, you know, I, I, I know you by face. I, I met you in, at conventions, but I really don't know you. I'd like to know more about you, I'd like to meet you. I know that job in Sherry Hill fell through, but there's so many other opportunities and I'd really like to know you a little more. I said, well, uh, how can you say no to an older colleague? I was very flattered. So I got the directions how to get to him in the Downs in Jersey. It was not too far a drive from Philadelphia. And I drove in and I met with him. And uh, um, after we schmoozed, probably an hour and a half or two hours, 
uh, I must have made some sort of an impression. He said to me, well, you know, I'm sorry about this job in um, Cherry Hill falling through, but there's uh, so many other very fun opportunities. I'd like you to look into it. Well, again, what was his position? He was the chairman of the placement, placement committee for of the United States, of the uh, Educators' Assembly. Uh-huh. Educators' Assembly is a division of the United States, isn't it? Conservative educators' Assembly is the uh, Educators' Arm. Arm of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, they have the Rabbinical Assembly, Educators' Assembly, and they Cantorial. have something. Cantorial also. The Cantorial Assembly, mm -hmm. and they have uh, 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 Executive Directors, whatever they call themselves, not, not mm -hmm. Assembly. Mm -hmm. Said, okay. I said, uh, for instance, what kind of positions? He said, uh, there's something in, in in Cincinnati, Ohio. I said, what's a Cincinnati? You've heard these things in television Cincinnati. Have you ever been to Cincinnati? That's all I know about Cincinnati. Mm. He said, Irve M. B. Israel. Great city in, 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 in Jewish life. Uh, I said, well, look, I, I'm really not interested in, in relocating. I'm with Bill Lackens. I enjoy the work there. He's a wonderful guy. Uh, you know, I, I really... Uh, what will it hurt you to look? Okay. All right. He knew, he, he knew Zaleski was retiring. Yeah. Um, I came home and told your mother that. And she said the same thing. What will it hurt you to look? You can always say no. So I called... Uh, uh, Nate Kaplan here in Cincinnati, and we arranged for me to come out. Where was Nate Kaplan? Was Nate, Kaplan? Nate Kaplan was the president of the Bureau. Hmm. Uh, Nate had been with the Bureau for God knows how many years, and he was the kind of guy who would come to Federation meetings to talk about the allocation for the Bureau, and he'd talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, talk your head off, until I finally they gave him his money just to get rid of him. Isn't he this little man bald with a white mustache? No. He was a little man, but... And he was bald, but no, but... And mustache. White, mus white mustache? No. no. Picture him. Okay. Anyhow, uh, um, I flew in. Cincinnati had at that point one... Um, at the airport, you'd have the different... One terminal. One, they had one terminal, which is now Terminal A. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it came in in a DC-10. Propeller. Double prop. Ugh, terrible. Uh, um, drove up, uh, came up to the tarmac, lowered the wing, walked down to the tarmac, and, and the staircase, all right? And here's Nate Kaplan to greet me at the foot of the plane. Well, that's neat. That's flattering. They allowed people to go out there. They, you you no, can't no, do that. No chance. And uh, it took me in his car to uh, um, to the Carousel Hotel Motel here, mm -hmm. which was then the height of its, its glory, and uh, bought me a room at, at uh, near the swimming pool, which was the uh, cat's meow. Yeah. And he started to talk to me the minute we got off the tarmac. And didn't stop until <laughs> we got to the hotel room. He was recruiting hard. Um, he was a sweet guy. He was a sweet guy. And he was devoted to Zaleski. And then he transferred the devotion to me. Hmm. Um, then, uh, uh, I don't remember the sequence of events. Anymore. He took, we had a meeting of the, of the, um, um, of the board mm -hmm. of the bureau, and he took me there, and uh, you know the uh, that time we must have been thirty people sitting around a table, from all shades of the community, um, and they grilled me for for half an hour or more. Uh, how would I deal with the reform schools? Would I visit them on Saturdays? And I said no, I would not. But I assumed they have classes on Sunday as well. <laughs> I visited them then. Uh, you know, asked me about everything in the sun. And how, then they excused me. How irrelevant that became. Well, then they excused me. 
I'm over the art, this was at the OC, at the JCC. Uh, and uh, uh, I was out in the hall, I was out there maybe 10 minutes and so forth, and then Nate came from, Kaplan came out and said, Mazel Tov, they've uh, uh, elected you as the new director of the Bureau. I said, we haven't accepted. Well, what's the offer? The offer then was, oh, I, I wrote myself a contract. Uh, which I gave them, and I asked for, you know, I was making all 12,000 at the, the board, or maybe it's 12,500 of them. I offered, I uh, asked for uh, uh, 25. That's a big, big jump up. So they came across with an offer of 22,500 the first year and 25 the second year. So okay, I'll take it. Well, can you talk to mom first? No, well, I didn't have that yet, but yeah. All right, all right, all right. Um, they came home, and, and, and by the way, oh, after the meeting, Nate takes me his car back to the motel. And I figure, okay, now I can go to the motel and go to sleep and have a little rest. Uh-uh. Nothing doing. Came in and talked some more. <laughs> he was eager. I, I flew home the next day. And said to your mother, there's a nut there. He wouldn't give me a minute's peace. Hmm. He talked my head off. Anyhow, she convinced me to go. So I took it on, on, on the basis of, of 22.5 and 5 a second year, at 25 a second year, and the pension and hospitalization, and then the paying the uh, moving expenses, the whole uh, seven right, years. Right. Um, so that's how it came in. Hmm. And uh, the position... The, uh, I had the foggiest idea what one does in the Bureau. I was going to say. I had the foggiest idea. Um, then I learned what they had done in the past, what Celeste had done now. Uh, obviously, uh, you know the, the, the blind man who described an elephant? Hmm. The blind man? The one who felt his friend said he's got a big uh, schlang or something in front. <laughs> the one who the, the tongue was back said there's a little whisk or something <laughs> floating around. And each one described the elephant differently because all described the part they knew. Right. Um, what I heard about what they did, what Zaleski did, is colored by the fact that nobody really knew what he did. Uh -huh. I assume he tried his best he was 25 years to uh, um, to provide some services to the community. Mind you, the board, the bureau had originally been established in 1925. It was, I think, the third bureau established in the United States, and basically, it was established to coordinate the disparate Hebrew schools that were operating and the Chadorim were operating without any kind of leadership. Mm -hmm. And at that time they had one in Price Hill and one in, in Kentucky in Avondale. and in Avondale. Well, um, and they'd hired over the years a number of different directors to run the school. Uh, eventually, I think uh, the way the community uh, uh, dissipated in in uh, Price Hill and in, in Covington. Uh, it was basically a Talmud Torah in Cincinnati. And uh, eventually they bought a synagogue building that had been vacated by Adath Israel and uh, they put a little office in for the Bureau. But its primary job was still running a Talmud Torah. And to this day, you meet somebody who said, I'm with the Bureau of Education, and tell you, I went to school in the Bureau. I went to a school in the Bureau. Mm -hmm. I went to school in the Bureau. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, I guess, um, there, there was a realization that there are really two different personalities to the Bureau, and there's a Talmud Torah. The people who were the big uh, machas and uh, and supporters of the bureau were really the Talmud Torah people. 
they had a, a natural stake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there were a lot of people here in town who were uh, not necessarily religious, but they were Yudea Sefer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have that anymore today. You have more religious than that then, mm -hmm. but, but not uh, uh, knowledgeable people. <coughs> So eventually it split into two organizations with two separate board of directors. A number of people served in the Bureau in the 30s and in the 40s, later went on to some very, very uh, uh, big leadership positions. Um, the, the one became director of the Cleveland uh, Board of Education, now they became director of the Bureau in, in, in New York, mm -hmm. and, all, 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 and I guess they looked for things to do. So they began to, I guess, to find things for Bureau to bring into the adult community. To become more of a resource to the community. So they had uh, uh, Medava Malkus. Hmm. They had cantorial concerts. Um, they had some adult classes, the triumphal things. But Jewish educational content provided for the community came out right. of the Bureau. Right. Um, at some point, Zaleski, during this 25 years, was in charge of both. So, to all intents and purposes, he ran the Talmud Torah. Mm -hmm which had shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. Mm -hmm. By the time we came here, it was vestigial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, during his tenure, I guess, he too was looking for things to do. So he tried to organize in-service classes for teachers. He put out uh, a, a teacher's newsletter with uh, uh, help and in, in, in instructional problems. Uh, he uh, he had an adult program. Uh, he tried different things. I don't think he ever got real credit for it. If you ask him what he did, he did nothing. Mm. He's known as a good raconteur. 25 years of nothing is a long nothing. He was a good raconteur. Mm. He would sing uh, Yiddish and Hebrew songs. He would tell stories. People enjoyed talking with him, mm -hmm. but to ask him what he did, he did nothing. He didn't do nothing. He did what he could right. with what he had. Right. Um, he developed a, a uh, uh, junior uh, um, uh, federation to fundraise for the federation. Mm. A young leadership division. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a joke, but he tried it. Uh, Charlie Becker, whom he hired as assistant, ran a newsletter for him, which was distributed to all the schools, and the kids used it for the airplanes. Mm -hmm. When you look back on your 25 years at, as the executive director of the Bureau, what are the things that you're most proud of, the accomplishments that you gave to the Bureau? Things that you introduced or things that you maintained? Well, uh, for one thing, I try to continue with adult, with uh, with uh, what some calls it, teacher education. Mm -hmm. Annual uh, conferences bring in people from outside, uh, um, visiting the schools, whatever. I gave it up after a while. It, it didn't. Uh, visiting it didn't, or teacher conferences? Visiting. Both. Mm -hmm. Teacher conferences, I continued. That's one of the things that is left from the Bureau that Federation is still doing. Once a year they have a city-wide conference. Um, what a lot of people don't to this day understand is that Jewish education isn't for kinder. They still think Jewish education is the Sunday school and the Hebrew school. Mm -hmm. I try to get something on adult level. The Melton School, which we ran for about nine years, was fantastic. Um, and I can't take that much credit for it. I think most of the credit belongs to Nancy Klein, who ran it for me. But I picked it. Mm 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, our book fairs. See, uh, how much did you pay her for that? Do you recall? She started at about five thousand dollars, and I think worked up to twenty some. What a bargain! Uh, oh yeah, um, the uh, teacher center was something that uh, we developed. You saw that in Chicago, no? One of my principals came back to us with stories of what happened in Chicago. And why can't we do it? I said, why can't we? Mm-hmm. So a little bit, a little bit did it. Your I went, first... went to, to the women's uh, group, uh, what's it, the um, National Council of Jewish Women, and I got them to give me $6,000. I went to the Federation and got $6,000 from them. With that, we started a, a, a thing. <coughs> I paid it the director of five or six thousand dollars. That was Sunny. That was Sunny Mobley. Where'd you find her? I don't know. But she was really. She was your favorite. She was really the one for for that job. Um, and of course, it's changed over the years completely. Um, then, the, by the time Larry Katz came, he took that over, and he really developed the. Uh, the the um, 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 videos and, and and cassettes and so forth, but Larry was very disorganized, a, a schlob, and the people followed him weren't much better, and so uh, that was not well run, and things disappeared, and never came back. Um, but the teacher center was was a big thing. Uh, we finally built a beautiful room. Mm-hmm. And I raised 125 grand to do it, and that was good. Uh, the um, the uh, under Seleski, the bureau had done some uh, uh, culture programs in connection with in conjunction with with the uh, JCC, and they called it a JCA Culture Series, but it was mostly local amateur talent. Mm-hmm. Nothing special. I brought big names from all over the place, and um, a couple times a year, three or four times a year, uh, and I did this uh, because I felt it was important to bring these kinds of experience to the community, not to raise funds. So what we charged was absolutely ludicrous. I would charge eighteen dollars for a season of four programs. That's nothing. Uh, Today they charge you thirty-five dollars a door for one. Right. But we, we brought people like uh, uh, people down on Broadway. Uh, 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 Mike Burstein. Burstein was here, and then Adler, Bruce Adler was here. Uh, a number of top chazonim were here, and so on. Well, and choirs, and yeah. yeah. But uh, we never got really. Uh, what what it started with. Uh, the uh, the um, what's it called? Um, the Jewish Rough Board had a department of of, uh, of Yiddish. Uh, Melotic was in charge of that, uh, and they would send out a Yiddish touring company once a year, mm-hmm. all over the country, with with. Uh, uh, Yiddish steak, um, and uh, uh, Zaleski would bring them in once a year. They charged really next to nothing, a thousand dollars or something for a group of four, you know, to come uh, for a performance, because it was heavily underwritten. Uh, I continued that for a while, but the people who understand Yiddish would appreciate. A Yiddish theater program. Fewer and fewer. Oh, right. They're dying out. Right. Uh, they, they'd like uh, 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 to think they know Yiddish, but uh, if they hear a Yiddish word, that's the Yiddish. But a skit with people talking to each other. So, but I did some of that at first, uh, too. But uh, that, I think, was, was important. Because I think Jewish culture is Jewish education. I brought in a book fair. Um, I didn't start the book fair. Book fair was started years earlier by a community shaliach 
as a, an Israeli program. He brought in Israeli books and Israeli tapes, mm -hmm. and it was promoted by the Federation with a lot of uh, volunteers and you know, spent a fortune on uh, uh, fancy paper and, and invitations. And, you know, they lost a shirt on them, but it was a book. Yeah. Um, when he left the Shaliyah, nobody picked it up. So I picked it up, but I wasn't interested in promoting Israel per se, I was promoting in, in Jewish books. Mm -hmm. So I would fill two rooms with books that the, the desks and the, the tables would groan under the weight. And I brought in the stands out, and I brought in, uh, you know, uh, um, you name it. I brought in the JPS, uh, Tanakh, and, and all sorts of things, and the art scroll material. Uh, and, and then, and, in addition and, to and that. The artwork, and the artwork, too. And mm -hmm. They brought in artwork, and they brought in Hanukkah uh, uh, supplies. And it had a, a big following. It turned out eventually to be a, a, a profit maker. I worked like a dog, and uh, your mother can tell you how I schlepped books up and down the hall, and uh, I spent hours mm -hmm. uh, cataloging and yeah, the whole thing. But it was worthwhile. I, I saw somebody just last week, uh, you know, in the restaurant mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. we were leaving. Mm -hmm. He said, to me, "I missed the book fair." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I built a library. I'll tell you what, interesting thing about, about the book fair, although, there were, although you also got, you got books in consignment to sell, specifically for the book fair, but most of your inventory you kept in the bureau. I did all the bookstore year round. And again, my motive wasn't profit. My motive was to get this into Jewish hands. So I didn't sell a single book at list price. Everything was discounted. If the book cost me a 40% off, I sell it at 20% off, mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But nothing was sold full price. So I didn't lose, but I uh, didn't make any fortune. Where that money is gone, by the way, I don't know. What it's, you mean? it's disappeared. You, well, how much money was it when you left? Probably had about thirty, forty thousand dollars left. Interesting. And it, it, Federation yeah. must. It got gobbled, it got gobbled up. Yeah. Um, I built a library, and though it wasn't the biggest library in the world, some people said, what is a library for? HEC is a library. Yeah, people from here don't go to HEC to the library. Mm. There's a library downtown too, but people go to Bound Hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I built it without any cost in the nickel. How? First of all, I, I put up uh, plaques in the wall. I charged $750 a plaque. And with that, I was able to buy wood and uprights, and uh, I hired a guy to drill holes in the wall and install it, and I worked right with him. I went out and bought the wood. I w went out and bought the paint. I painted it stuff. Mm -hmm. well, and you got right through the wall, remember? Yeah, and we put this thing up. Uh, I'd go to uh, the library book fair, at the end of the year, the library would sell all used books, overstocks. And we'll pick a lot of, they had a lot of good Jewish books. I picked it up for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when I went and were buying books, uh, I, I had books, you know, I would buy them at, at, at a fraction of the cost. Um, we had, uh, uh, we asked people to bring in books that they no longer, you know, people inherit from the parents, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of them are old, Sidur, Machzor, whatever, but we found some good stuff too. Mm -hmm. That's how little by little I built up the library. Then when I had more money, I bought books. What well, I thought was amazing was that so many of the books that made their way into the uh, book sale, the book fair, mm -hmm. and the book fair took a, took a lot of space. Oh, yeah. A lot of tables. But you found a way to cram that all in that little bookstore. Thirty? No, no, no. no. I'd send back probably uh, 10, 12 copies of books, right? yeah. okay. uh, which was a job too, packing and then mm -hmm. uh, comparing 
what is sown, what is oh, what is uh, oh, and all that sort of stuff. But I, I, I maintain a year-round bookstore. How did I do that? Again, it started next to nothing. Mm -hmm. I got some catalogs in of old stocks. Um, and I'd be able to get some decent books at 20, uh, at, at, at maybe $2 that were $30 books. Right. All right. So it's selling for five. Right. 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 But that's how I build it up slowly. Uh, and I had uh, quite a, a uh, large number of, of uh, overstock uh, stores that I bought from. Um, do, you, do you know the um, uh, the book, uh, the um, Mishkan? The book called the Mishkan? Mm -mm. No. There's a beautiful coffee table book. Of the uh, of the Mishkan, uh, all the parts of it, of its construction, mm -hmm. everything else. Yeah. Uh, it uh, it retails at seventy five dollars. I picked them up for five bucks. <laughs> I sold them for twenty five. So a, a bargain for everybody. I remember last year I was at a conference for work, and Mordechai Rosenstein was at the conference showing his artwork. Mm -hmm. You have some of his artwork pieces mm -hmm. in your in the home. He had an shown his artwork in many 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 years um, but I, I mentioned to him you I mentioned him to you I mentioned you to, to him. him to him and he remembered uh, yeah. you showing his stuff in Cincinnati yeah well I I, I exhibited a lot of different artists uh, I, I always wanted I didn't want a smorgasbord of 15 artists two pieces from this one two pieces from that one I wanted to schedule showing of a particular artist at the most two of them mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um uh, michael schwartz's stuff was beautiful michael schwartz never i think and he's, maybe he's nifter already he maybe nifter. i know he was very ill he was uh alzheimer's yeah he was, he was a sweetheart of a guy and extraordinarily talented um but um uh, some israelis there's a lot of israeli Happy. yeah there's a lot of israeli art that have nothing to do with yishkeit Yes, he stirs a lot of his stuff. Yeah, but there's a lot of uh, the, the paint pictures of women, pictures of uh, uh, shops in in Paris. I'm not interested in that. You're looking for Judaica. And we place a lot of that stuff. So th that was something that I, I was proud of doing. Um, what else? I don't know. How about um, Marshall Living? Well, I introduced that. Yeah, they're still doing it. As a matter of fact, in I a very think big way, David Weiss is very active in that. Yeah, uh, and it's been copied, you know, by other organizations with other names. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Federation here has a uh, visit to Israel and Poland, which is not a march of the living. We go. That's his why goes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, the same thing it did with. Uh, with the uh, um, uh, program in, in Washington D.C., where we bring oh, uh, li um, Panim Panim. Panim Panim, yeah. That yeah. one had a big scandal a couple of years ago. They all have scandals sooner or later. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I tried to to uh, do what I could. I couldn't do much with the children because I don't run a school. And there's just so much you can and you, do. And you didn't control the money that went to the school. They no. straight from federations. So you didn't have any power over the school. One of my presidents, Lou Jacobs, who's a very sweet guy, uh, lost all Heishik in the Bureau, and I'm sure all Heishik in me, because when I came here, one of my goals had been that the Bureau would eventually become the, uh, the major force for Jewish education in Cincinnati, which would mean we would run the afternoon schools and, and the day schools. But that mean in turn meant that we would handle the money. Federations only give us the money. Right. Uh, and if you don't have that, you have no power. what power have you got? Now, I can just see where I would go to Adith Israel and tell them what to do. Right. That's how you were to go. 
Um, you were with the Bureau for 25 years. <coughs> yep. I remember in the very beginning, they one of the things that certain people in the community wanted to see happen was the merger of Yavna and Chavz Chaim. That was never going to happen. Well, that was on, one of the basic things that the Bureau was charged with. Um, I came here in 1971. Uh, uh, in 1967 or 68, something like that, there was a study of Jewish education in Cincinnati conducted uh, at the request of Federation, by, uh, conducted by the American Association for Jewish Education. Mm -hmm. And they sent three Gidola in her door down to assess the state of Jewish education in Cincinnati. They included Alvin Schiff, uh, they included uh, uh, a few other guys on the same level as Alvin Chef. Uh, mm -hmm. They spent three days in town, four days, and to interview this, that, and the other guy. Mm -hmm. And then they went back to New York and wrote a report. And I'll tell you what you can do with the report. Well, yeah. Not that there was anything wrong with them, but unless you really know the community, it's meaningless. Right. At that time, uh, Hebrew Day School was a zoo. They had maybe 30, 40 kids, most of them in the preschool, and those who were not running around like with sugars in the hall. The director was uh, uh, completely incompetent. Yavne was not much bigger. It had the, where Chabad is now, on the summit, summit. Um, it was run a little bit better, but it was also a small school. And what these uh, two guys, these four guys, the servant, came to the conclusion was that uh, they're not viable, any of them, and that uh, murder. they should be given an opportunity to reach viability over a period of six months or a year, whatever. If they're not viable by then, they should be merged. Merge water and fire. <laughs> What's amazing about it is that the schools, and this is, for me, one of the anomalies of Cincinnati, which is that the schools were so much smaller in terms of their enrollment than they are today, mm -hmm. and yet I just can't escape the feeling that this community is so much poorer Jewishly than it was then. Sure, because you don't have these, uh, you're dare safe anymore. The... the uh, the element that controls Jewish life is an element of ignoramuses. Right. But these kids are not going so to... It's leaning alone. It, it's just sad. It's tragic. Um, and, and, and the kids are going... Well, do you know what the enrollment is at Chofz Chaim? Or any sense of what the enrollment would be? A couple hundred? When I was running the Bureau, one of the things that I did was conduct annual surveys of enrollment. And... Uh, those fed into the figures that the American Association had for a national Jewish census. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. When I left, forget it, the oh. whole thing fell apart. Nobody was going to bother with that anymore. So I don't know that anybody knows how many kids there are in the schools anymore. But I have the feeling that Yavne is down to probably 300 or less, mm -hmm. where they were, when they planned the new buildings and put up all the, put all the money in the buildings, you're planning for for an enrollment of 500 plus, never materialized. And Hebrew Day has been able to hang on to pretty much the same numbers over the years, and probably between 125 and 150, which is, uh, you know, uh, don't forget too that they have uh, families with a lot of kindle. Right, so it's fewer families, but more kids. Um, I'm intrigued with, with something like Yavna. When when the numbers start falling off, yeah, do you think that's a function of changing interest and values <clears throat> in the community, or the fact that population sizes just tend to peak and valley? I mean, are there maybe there are fewer kids? Maybe that's why the school is shrinking, or or is the community just losing interest again? I I think it's probably some of both. Um, and people, people Yavne, are Yavne schools, began to, to, to uh, grow by leaps and bounds when enrollment in the day schools became um, not only accepted, prestigious, but but prestigious, right? Uh, was that as an when I first came to yeah. town, 
people who said the day schools, you know, those, those, those are uh, self-hating Jews that, that want to uh, segregate isolate, themselves. And isolate, isolate, right? Yeah. But I, I always thought that the reason why the schools started swelling was because people were so disaffected by the public schools. Sure. But you, that you, you have one better. You have a push-pull system. So, uh, some people are attracted, uh, pulled in right. by what the schools offer. Some people are repelled by the public schools and are pushed out. Public schools have not certainly not gotten better. No. But but no. the day school education is, is not as, as prestigious as it was even but 10 years ago. But the schools where Jews live are decent schools. Schools where... Yes. The schools in, in, in Sycamore Township mm-hmm. are good schools. Right, 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 right. But they were good schools when the day schools started getting more but prestigious Jews also. didn't live there then. Is that true? Jews lived in, in here, in Roselong, where the lousy schools... Well, they lived in 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 uh, in, in uh, um, uh, you know Avondale. Maybe lousy neighborhood, Bond Hill. Maybe I don't know. But uh, the, the even when I was in Yavna, people were moving out to uh, Sycamore. Yes. But I had tal- a t- There's tiny- some good schools in Sycamore. I understand that, but I had a very tiny enrollment in, in my day, mm-hmm. and, and ten years later, it exploded. Kid people were because it became prestigious. It's fascinating. The the uh, the leadership of federation started promoting is it. discovered Yavne, right? And they put their children in and put their money in, and it grew by leaps and bounds. Because their kids were there. That's really what it was. Right. I don't know if it's the leadership getting older, and they don't have those kids anymore, or the new kids, the new people who aspire to the leadership kids, don't have the kids there. Don't have the cheshik. or their kids there. The you know, the kids there. Right. It's fascinating. Just it goes up and down. Um, uh, what else I want to ask you about the bureau? Talk to me a little bit about the end of your career at the bureau. Well, I, I think uh, to some extent I'm responsible for that myself. How so? I don't want to knock myself. I have a lot of qualities and a lot of abilities, but some things I don't have. I don't have the organizational skill to deal with boards. A board has to be grown. It has to be nurtured. It has to be cuddled. I have a board elected, and I see him at board meetings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in a sense, I've neglected the board. And the board is the, the thing that holds the organization together. Um, I'm not a promoter. And you got to promote those things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in, in, in that sense, I have failed. It. But what happened over the years is the Bureau no longer ran a Talmud Torah. Mm-hmm. And for those people who see Jewish education, Talmud Torah education, what good is the Bureau? What does it do? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Who needs it? Right. I, t- uh, I saw the, the guy who was going to come in as a new president of the Federation, and I showed him to the teacher center, and showed him to, to the library. I was very proud. Mm-hmm. What are you in the library for? We got a library, he was going to come out. What are you in the teacher center for? Each school have its own. Right. Toward the end, when, when, when you were ending your career at, at, at the Bureau, is approximately the time when continuity was all the rage in the Federation world. They no, I think the, the continuity craze had already passed. It had already passed? I think it had already passed. But they don't didn't know what they wanted about continuity anyhow. But uh, um, what happened with the Bureau, I think, was decay from within. Uh, and, and that was fueled by the came from outside. Federation had wanted to close the bureau down since Zaleski's days. Hmm. I staunched that for 25 years. I held them off. As long as I was there, they wouldn't close it. Mm-hmm. But I left. And uh, the guy that appointed after me uh, was a rabbi, HSC rabbi, who really wanted to get into the pulpit, and just did us a favor. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't care less what happened to the bureau. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, uh, the federation didn't have any strong opposition there. Uh, little by little, um, our 
our strong proponents in the Federation Board declined, both in numbers and in uh, influence. Um, so the Federation's wish to close the beer down became easy to implement. Um, the last year was here, Federation in one stroke cut our allocation by fifty thousand dollars. That's huge. What do you cut out when you lose fifty thousand dollars? Um, as I said, they didn't see the need for a uh, library, they didn't see the need for a teacher center, they didn't uh, uh, adult education, uh, congregations provide adult education. Um, the the uh, book fair, congregation has own book fairs. Don't need you for that. Uh, uh, Jason A, uh, we got Jason C. Don't do culture, right? Hmm. And then what happened was that the the membership of the board itself, I think, failed to grasp what a jewel they had, and uh, they themselves said, "What do we need this for?" And they decided to uh, uh, to call it quits. So they voted themselves out of existence. Federation gobbled it up, but then pretty much everything disappeared. Federation, uh, uh, first of all, they, they threw out such stuff. I kept uh, a file of all the board minutes going back to the 1920s. Don't ask me what is violence. It was thrown out. Hmm. Uh, I had a copy of the 18... That's something that the Brandeis Center would love to get a hold on. If they something had. that our own uh, center here. Yeah, uh, yeah HEC also. Right? The, the archives. I had a, a single copy left of, a, of, a, of the Constitution of the Talmud Torah Society from the 1800s. Wow, that's a great archive. Yeah. Wow. It threw everything out. Wow. Um, but 25 years of a good pronounce, huh? What was, it, what was your budget at the max? I don't remember anymore. It was over 200,000. Yeah. And that riled them too. See, as long as the bureau was costing them $20,000 a year, $30,000 a year, but when the bureau is asking for 125000 all of a sudden this is money. Right. Where'd Larry go? What was, what was Larry's last Larry name? Larry Katz. Katz. He became a bureau director in, uh, in New England. Yeah, yeah, still there. He is still there. Yeah. He would... Uh, see, again, I'm a world's worst correspondent. He dropped me, you know, his, uh, his family home. newsletters. Oh, yeah. Every year, what they were doing, what the kids were doing, and all that. I never responded. <laughs> um, Eventually, they would stop coming. What do you think? So you've been living in Cincinnati since 1971? Since 1971, yeah. So that's how many years? 21, 36 years. years. Uh -huh. There's, how's, how's Cincinnati fair compared to any other community you lived in? Well, it's home. And I've li lived here longer than any place else. You've seen this community change also. The community has changed. Um, In the last few years, when we were talking about uh, should we stay, should we leave, you know, one thing became very clear: there's no place in Cincinnati itself I would want to move to. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to move to Gough Manor. Mm -hmm. What's in Gough Manor? Right. Mm. Uh, to move to. Uh, there's uh, only one thing in Gough Manor, which is a shop. That's it. That's that's about it, and that's uh, not what it used to be. Right. It's not in the tissue. Is that, no, uh, yeah, of course. Um, any place else, aside from the fact that the uh, cost of housing will be twice of what I can sell this house for, mm -hmm. um, I would not be within walking distance of the shul. Right. And if I were able to find something, it wouldn't be an orthodox shul. Right. So there's no place in Cincinnati. To move out of town is a question of where. And uh, what it even pays at my age to, to relocate someplace else. Right. Uh, your mother would love your neighborhood. 
But who can afford to live there? Yeah, I can't. Right. Um, we could buy a, a house like Jeff's in, in Florida. But then you have the same problems. No shul, no kashrus, no, no nothing, no yish kind of. Right. Any sort. Here at least we have an, uh, we have access to the kosher food. We have access to uh, the shul even if it's only in the Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Right. Uh, where would we move? Right. 